welcome back to RTS and welcome back to the Build of Page series where I'm playing along with Kristen, Mora, and Christy and we're just giving you some starting points, some ideas and we're just making layouts, having fun and I love this type of challenge because it always gives you different ideas and I think it keeps this hobby exciting. So I'm going to be playing with Kristen's starting point in this video about grabbing an older paper collection 2018 or older or a paper pad and so that's what I'm grabbing so and my design is going to be so simple because I'm really only going to be playing with basically one and one third piece of paper and I always think it's laughable that we pull all this stuff together and then when you use your paper or supplies sometimes you just use a small amount it's funny how that happens but I like options so I'm going to be playing with this 12 by 12 as my background and as one of my patterns and when I cut off the branding strip especially with like with this inlay wood grain it's kind of hard to think about where does it go where does it go which way is it supposed to be so when I cut off the branding strip I will mark it that T this is the top of the paper on the back because I like to make sure I keep some papers the way it was intended I think it just makes more sense and then I'm also going to be playing this one is called radiant no cheerful that's called cheerful the back was that pink geometrics and I'm wondering if I went to my pink rainbow if I would have had some of this hmm I should have done that so then I'm also going to be playing with this one because we are going to be talking about the beach club and uh, this reminds me of beach waves or mermaid scales or just anything nautical I love this this one is called what was this called jubilant so that is the 12 by 12 right there look how much i'm going to use <laughs> yeah like i said about a one and a third piece of paper and then i'm also going to be playing with this sketch from becky at page maps march 2021 i'll have the link below it's this one down here at the bottom and the reason i liked it is because it has a cattywampus topper and it had rainbows but i'm going to use these mermaid scales and then it had three photos so i can easily adapt it to four so it's a really basic design and if you look at this there's a lot of white space in the back so that doesn't have to be white cardstock uh, or any kind of cardstock you could use a pattern so that's why this design is so simple and I really didn't even look at it it just got me started so this is my cattywampus piece of paper that's going to go at the top and truly it's about I would say one and a half by 12 and it's cut at an angle so I'm going to plop that at the top and guess what Heidi ho heyday that is my page design I kid you not that really is my page design and so I'm going to be dressing all of that up and so the reason why this is such a simple design is because this pattern and this pattern does all the work I don't have to do anything else so then I'm going to be using four photos and let's talk about photos for a minute uh, these are my wallets that I print on my Epson picture mate so let's talk about the order of photos on your page because you can do it in different ways so one way I could do this is of course how I have the beach club right here I could put these photos in order of sequence of how they happen so of course you go to the beach club you see the logo on the out you know of the restaurant a one compass that's the entrance and then you get the menu and then you get the food so I could definitely do that another way I could do this is simply by going by weight so this photo looks better down here at the bottom I could do that or another thing I could do is since this says ale and compass restaurant I could use this as my title you absolutely can use a photo as a title so I could put this here and then however I wanted to do these I could do that but what I'm going to do for my photos is that I'm going to put them in order of weight and what do I mean by that so of course this sign here because of the darker color a darker color and a bigger photo is going to have a more heavy weight than something like this little menu so i'm going to put i think about the menu here the food here and this ale and compass sign it's a heavier photo the weight seems heavier and of course if you think about it if you took the sign off the wall that is going to be heavier than these rolls and butter and also the menu so that's how i'm going to do that and then also I wanted to say that if you have a photo that you want it to appear bigger than it really is which is this beach club photo beach club yeah beach club when I was trimming it I trimmed too much so what I did was I put it on a mat then I put it on another mat so if you have uh, a photo that you want it to appear bigger than it is 
just give it more than one mat. So that's why that's why this one has two mats because I cut a little too much, and I will not go reprint a photo. I will figure that figure it out somehow. So that's what I did. I give it two mats. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be playing with Creative Memories. I'm going to be playing with Art Nouveau, and then also Boho Escapes. And I find it so ironic that Creative Memories has these rhinestones with boho escapes. I don't even think they match. So I'm definitely going to take this out of here and I'm going to put this someplace else. Because these pearls match this Art Nouveau to a T. So I'm going to be playing with the elements out of both of those. And then I'm going to play with some stamps. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use this here die cut piece that I had actually uh, pulled and put together on that little tray and again that video will be listed below where we just sat and built the pages and now we're going to build the layout with the page if that makes sense so I'm going to use this as basically a layering piece I'm going to put it under here and that right there travel bucket list that's going to serve as my title then I'm going to take these great big bamboo frames that was from and boy these are nice weight creative memories I'm going to use this as a big photo mat. Look at this. Now that is bringing in the mood and feel. You would think that would be from the Beach Club. So I'm going to put the photo here somewhere. I'm going to use this as a layering piece, and that's going to serve as my title. And I will anchor it right here between those little anchors. That's, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I love that already. How simple is that? If I can get it without sliding... And then I have this piece, and I thought, well, what I would do is come down here, and maybe I would use this as an anchoring piece down here. I may have to shift all this over, because I'm going to have a cluster here and a cluster here, but I am going to get a visual triangle in. And speaking of that, what did Becky have? She had a visual triangle, too. It was little, but she had it on there. So I'm going to use uh, this big photo uh, bamboo as a big photo mat but you can see my photo is much smaller <laughs> than the mat so just offset something if something looks a little off scale offset it no one will be the wiser and then I'm going to use the other one as an offsetting down here as a cluster base here so then I also I don't even know where to start I have so much stuff here because we're going to build let's build a cluster up here so let's slide this so I have another bamboo frame I have all of these creative memory pieces. I kid you not, look at all this. And this is just for the top cluster. And look, what was in the sign? That ampersand that had that fish hook. I found that. I'm going to use that. More leaves and flowers. And then uh, also a seashell bread. And I have some of those pearls from creative memories. And I have a paper clip, these rose gold paper clips from Not Just for Boys Kit Club. I definitely have that link below. You have to go over and check out those kids. They got it all going on over there. So let's go ahead and use all these items. All these items you see to your left, I'm going to use this to build a cluster. And this is one of my favorite things of building a page because this is a very quick thing for me. Because all I do is start with bigger pieces and I work my way down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bamboo piece... And this is going to act as another cluster base. So this acted as my photo and title base. Now I'm going to build some more. Might have to shift everything over because my flowers are going to get a little big. And then I'm going to take all of these pieces. And of course the paper clip, you know, I could just clip right here on this photo. Love these little paper clips. Tim Holt still has that for sale. And I'll have them linked below. Oh, those are the cutest little clips. If I can get it on there, wait a minute. I'm dealing with three pieces of paper. I'm dealing with a photo and, and two pieces of paper. Look at that. Oh, I got to get some more of those. Ooh, nice, nice. Love that. And see, there's some empty space up there. So that's a great place to put a photo a paper clip on a photo where you have an empty space because you know it's like your souvenirs what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these leaves and I love using leaves for clusters and why because look right here is just three leaves and they will take up so much space for a cluster and I like it because you can use them as a directional piece so for this one here I'm going to put it in the middle this one I'm going to come over here and tuck it down here 
and this one here I'm going to tuck it down here so I'm just making a spray so you see how those leaves look how much space that used for a cluster cluster <laughs> cluster cluster Oh my goodness, I don't know how this is going to go. You would think I have had something to drink from the Ale and Compass, but anyways. And then, of course, you see because of the point of the leaves, it now gives me a triangle right here, right here, right here. So the point of those leaves give you a triangle. So it just gives you a design element, and all it is is leaves. I love using leaves and flowers for clusters, but then I like leaves and flowers. So then I'm going to take this ampersand, and I'm going to put it right on top of all of that. And then I found these pieces, which I thought these were different in the creative memory. So they're basically like a photo corner, but they have leaves. And I think I'm going to tuck this in somewhere so it would be peeking behind that. Just as a little something, you know, when it comes to a cluster, just layer and layer. And this was a, a wonky flower. I'm going to stick that there just for some color. And then I had this here, and I thought I would put it... I don't want to cover up that part of the ampersand. So what is the B-side? Oh, the B-side is turquoise. I tell you, Creative Memories has really stellar embellishments. They really do. So I don't want to cover up too much of this ampersand. So maybe I put the flower, something like that. So you could still know that that's an ampersand. And the seashell braid is going right in the center of that flower. And then I have two turquoise pearls, which came from that Art Nouveau. And I found it funny um, that those pearls in that Creative Memories pack didn't match. They were all in the same row, but they're different colors. I thought that was interesting. So then I'm going to dress this up a little bit because I have an October afternoon tab sticker. So I'm going to definitely put this to the side, just as a, something a little bit more filler. And I'm going to add the word delicious. And that'll just be a tab, and I'll stick that there. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to use some of the same elements I had up here. I'm going to come down here. So let me scoot this up just a tad. And what we're going to do, we're going to have a leaf. And again, that Creative Memories corner. These are all Creative memory stuff, other than the seashell breads. We have this. And there's that seashell bread. Love that. Love that that was already in the pack. I didn't have to go look for that. We have another one of these flowers, but this is smaller. And then we have a pineapple. We're in Florida. And then we also now have these. So I do want to say before I forget, I'm going to put a hidden Mickey on here, but I'm not going to show you. So if you find it, put it in the comments where you found it. So look for the hidden Mickey. I'm going to hide it on the page. So we're going to just build something down here. So I'm going to take this photo, and these will be in a line. And I will take this flower here, probably stick it in this way. And again, I love leaves because they have those points and it gives you just it just gives you direction so i'm going to take those and make a spray down here look how much space that fills up love that of course i have this uh, flower and maybe i would point this in such a way maybe i would anchor it this way different than the one above probably like that it's just about layering and when it comes to layering don't worry about if things have to be perfect, just move it around until you get a position that you like. So there's the flower. I think I'll put the pineapple over here. Maybe move this. And this is why I have to play before I glue because I have to know where things are going to go. And I will take a photo if I need. And that is the uh, seashell in the bread. And now I'll just come down here and put, put these somewhere. Somewhere like that. Or maybe I'd put them over here. Sometimes when I do these, I will uh, take them as if they're running off the page and running into the page. So that is the two clusters. Now let's come up here and let's use some of the same elements, but we want to use something much, much smaller. So here I have some yellow. That's a play off of those flowers. And then I have this flower. And then what do I have? One little dot. And so I'm going to build a visual triangle with those three pieces. So in the menu photo, I have some dead space. So I will just use that. If you don't know where to go with your clusters, look at your photos. What do you have in a, as a dead space? And I'll just bring the flower up there. And of course, this pearl, instead of using a clam, a clam, I don't know. I just want to break out in a SpongeBob <laughs> commercial right now. But I'm not going to use a seashell bread. I'm just going to use a, a pearl. Because just because you use it in two of your clusters, you don't have to use it in the third cluster, if that makes sense. So these will all just get anchored up there. 
Now, something else I'm going to add to the my page in a visual triangle because my clusters are in a visual triangle. And you see how what these, do you see how easy these clusters were? It was just using pieces that were already made in those creative memory packs. I started with the bigger and you just layer and tuck, layer and tuck. That's all that is. I am going to take three pieces of washi and I'm definitely going to put one on top of this. So this stands out a little bit because that is my title. I'm going to take another piece of washi and I probably will anchor it underneath this cluster up here. And so, of course, a visual triangle. I'm going to come down here with another piece of washi. And you know I'm in love with that polka dot washi. I'm still waiting for it to come in. And I will somehow, I don't know, down here somewhere, I'm going to have another piece of that washi. Somewhere. It'll be showing through. And then, of course, I've talked about this in other videos. When you have a layout and you're building a page and you have all the color you want, but you want something else, go with a metallic or go with black and white, something black and white, and those will be neutral colors. Now, what do I have left? I wanted to dress up this here. So I thought what I could do, and if you look at Becky's sketch, she has stitching up here. My sewing machine is still buried. That's not going to happen. So I grabbed this 49 and market stamp and I'm going to use this one here because I thought it looked nautical. So I'm going to use that and I am going to do some faux stitching and I'm going to stamp that across the top or maybe just one. I don't have to go the whole way across. I could. We shall see. Now, will I get my stamp press out for that? Yes, I will. So I will do that. Uh, after I disassemble all of this, I will do this. After I hear this, I will stamp that first. In fact, I probably will stamp that before I even adhere that piece of paper. That way, if there's it doesn't stamp well, I can just get another piece of paper. So now what I'm going to do then is since I brought out the stamps, I thought, hmm, I had some more other stamp sets. And I wanted to um, add a couple just little words, just a little bit of something. Now, I have a question. When you have stamps in your inventory and you don't know what they say, how do you figure out what they say without having to stamp it? I'll tell you a little hack I do. Like these are here, I have no idea what they say. So if I take them out of my pack, because I will cut up my stamp sets, and I'll talk about that in just a minute too. I, don't, I can't even tell you what this says, but if I hold it up to a light bulb, it says party time, it's a party, and let the good times roll. So that's what I do when I don't know what a stamp says. I'll hold it up to a light bulb, and that's a quick way for me to, to know what that stamp is. And then here's another thing. If you have stamp sets, this is by Hampton Art, and they don't fit in your Avery L pockets, which a lot of us use that. You know what I do? I just cut my sets apart, and then I just tuck them here to the side. That is what I do. So don't worry about having to get different Avery L pockets. Just cut some of your stamp sets up. Now, some people don't like that. It doesn't bother me. If I had it my way, all of my stamps would be cut apart, and they would all be in pockets that made sense. Like, all of my arrows would be in one pocket. All of my uh, hearts would be in one pocket. But, you know, that would be seriously, that would be a project to, yeah, seriously take upon yourself to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the word enjoy, and I'm going to bring it down here, and I'm going to stamp enjoy down here at this cluster. I have another one that says good food, good life. I'm going to plop that over here. So, of course, my stamps are going to be in a visual triangle. And I have the ones, uh, and this one says uh, rated, mmm. I guess rated, mmm, for good. Uh, rated, mmm. And I'm going to stamp that one up there. And I will probably get my stamp platform out for that. And also, definitely look for the hidden Mickey. And let's talk about that. So, I wanted a piece of pattern paper. Uh, you know, I wanted a piece of pattern paper for my Mickey head, but I definitely don't want to just use a piece of paper. So, always grab some die cuts and you could punch the center out because what's the likelihood that I would use this for tucking? So, it doesn't matter if there's something punched, punched out the middle. And I also said about getting a roller date stamp, and I'm not going to have any journaling. So, I am definitely going to put February 2020. And I think I'm going to put it right here where it says bucket list. I think I'm going to stamp it right in there. And you could stamp on your photos with a roller date stamp, which is good if you have dead space. Just make sure you use stays on ink. So that is my page. I definitely wanted to um, 
use this collection pack. So thank you, Kristen, for a great starter point because, again, pulling all these items together, I would not have come up with this on my own. That's why I love challenges. So I will have completed close-ups. Don't forget to look for the hidden Mickey. I'm going to get busy with the stamping, and then I will put completed close-ups at the end of this video. So come back in a couple days because then we're going to play with Mora's starting point and build some more pages, build some more layouts. And record the story absolutely so that's all i have for today come back to rts because you never know what we're gonna do bye